want to get paid. And if they shout to you, God forbid, you want to tear down the marriage you door. I want my check now. My bills is due. I don't want to hear nothing else about that. Hallelujah. But as soon as we mention finance in church, here they go. Talking about our money again. Hallelujah. But I'm teaching you the principles of getting your dough. Abiding God's word. Oh, come on. Hallelujah. His word will abide in you. And then his word will produce the fruit of itself. Come on. Because the Bible tells us and teaches us that the word, he watches over it. He watches over it to perform it. Come on. So when he see out that sowing according to his word, hallelujah, he produces a harvest on this yeah. side. Yeah. Ooh, he's not watching that word over there. So I'm going to produce the harvest because they sow it by faith. Come on. Can we sow by faith? Can we believe by faith? Yeah. Hallelujah. The Bible says he's a reward of them that diligently him. So we got to seek him in all things. He said, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. So I'm asking God for double because I'm sowing doubly. I'm giving doubly. Hallelujah. So I'm looking for a double harvest. I'm almost there. Watch this. Hallelujah. So let it abide in you. Tell somebody, let that word abide in you. Let that word abide in you. The moment you begin to respect the seed, you can enjoy the fruit. I said, the moment you are respect the seed, the moment you can enjoy the fruit. Yeah. There's a lot the seed got to go through in order to produce your heart. Yeah. There's a lot Jesus went through as the seed, as the word of God. He went through a lot. He was beaten. He was bruised. Yeah. He was a he was a sour. He was crucified, and then he was buried a lot. He was yeah. buried. And when he got up, oh, come on, that's the heart. Come on. The seed had to go in the dirt. Come on. He had to put the seed in the dirt in order for it to produce the harvest. And when Jesus came up, hallelujah, he was the harvest. Yeah. And I don't know about you, but I'm part of the harvest. Because when he got up, hallelujah, he got up in me too. And I hope he'll get up in you today. So therefore, we have to understand that he is the word of God. And he is also the harvest. Psalms 107 and 20 say, He sent his word and healed it and delivered them from their destruction. Hallelujah. That's why we got to respect the seed. That's why we got to respect the word in order for us to get the fruit or the manifestation of it. Because he said he sent his word. And what his word did? It did what? It healed them. And what did he do? Did he, God told you before the weekend? You will be the liver. Yeah. How you got to live? By his word. He sent his word. You receive that word because you allow that word abide in you as you abide in him. And then it produced the harvest of deliverance. Come on. Come on. See, well, we want deliverance, but we don't want to receive the word of it. Oh, I'm waiting for God to deliver me. God waiting on you to operate in what he heard and deliver you out. Come on. Come on. What more shall he do? He just has to speak the word and it's done. The Bible said he hovered over the water, over the dark water, and then he spoke light and light came. Yeah. Good Lord. So God only has to speak it over your life. Yeah, come on. All thing you got to do is operate in it. Come on. And know that it's already done. Okay, all right, all right. Bear with me yet. Hallelujah. Jesus, could you come a little quicker? Come on. So he sent his word. Tell someone he sent his word. He sent his word. He sent his word to heal you. Yeah, come on. You got to make this personal. God sent his word to heal me. How many of y'all need a healing in your life? How many of y'all need a deliverance in your life? God sent a word for you to be healed, and he sent a word for you to be delivered. What else are you waiting on? Hallelujah. So therefore, when he sent his word, his word has an assignment on it. Tell someone, I thank God for the assignment. I thank God for the assignment. Because I showed me the heal. I showed me the heal. And that word is not going to show up until it fulfills its assignment. Come on. Hallelujah. God don't send his word, hallelujah, without a purpose. It's on assignment. And when he sent that word on assignment, it must accomplish what it set out to do. Why? Because he said he watches over it. To watch it to perform, right? And if he's watching it to perform, then that word has to fulfill his assignment. Don't 
teacher watch, uh, give you a homework and then they watch to see when you fulfill your assignment? Yeah. Hallelujah. God can tell when his word be fulfilled inside of you. Okay, all right, all right. I got one more scripture. Y'all ain't gonna, gonna kill me today. Praise oh. God. I ain't gonna drag everybody with me. Hallelujah. Watch Come on. this. On uh, Second Peter 2 and 15 and 16. Because some people need a dumb ass to speak with a man's voice to stop your madness. Oh, good Lord. Uh, they need to be in church to hear that. Because if they'll just pass it by, they swore I'm cursing. <laughs> But it's on the scripture, amen. He said, which have forsaken the right way and are gone what? A straight, following the way of Balaam, the son of Bozar, who loved the wages of... Right. Come on, some people love the wages of unrighteousness. Go to verse 16, so you don't think I'm cursed. But was rebuked for his iniquity. The dumbass... I pause it for the inference. The dumbass speaking with man's voice forbade the madness. He stopped the madness of the prophet. Hallelujah. Some of us need a dumbass to talk to us. We need one to speak with a man's voice and say, look, you're going the wrong way. The story, for those who don't know the story of Baylor, he was going, he was riding on this, on this dumbass. And when he was going forward, hallelujah, there was an angel with a sword in the way. Because God had told me, you don't need to go that way. Hallelujah. But he want to go anyway. And so the dumb, you know, the dumb ass stopped and said, I ain't going no further. That's right. He was talking within himself. Hallelujah. But a uh, uh, bailer kept hitting him and kept hitting him and quit hitting him. And the thing kept moving and the angel stood there. And finally, God opened up the uh, dumb ass mouth. Yes. And he turned around and said, look, have I ever disobeyed you before? Oh. Have I ever been disobedient to you before? Three. So surely something got to be wrong. He said, look here. Hallelujah. If I would have kept on going, the angel was going to cut you down. He cut me down because I'm just a dumb ass. He wasn't going to cut him down, but he was going to cut down the one who's a disobedient. Hallelujah. The angel was following what God had told him. I mean, the, the, the ass was following what God had told him to do. He stopped. See, some of y'all don't stop enough to respect God's word. You keep trying to push on because you think you know better. Hallelujah. I'm going to stop there by myself. So some people need that. So Peter just recounting the lesson of Balaam who loved the wages or the fruit of unrighteousness. Some people love the fruit of unrighteousness. And if you love it and have power to stop it, then why have you not done it? Come on. If you don't love it and you got power to stop it, tell me why you haven't stopped it. Come on. Oh, 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 let me help you a lot. Y'all got this little lot. I can stop drinking. I can stop smoking. I can stop cursing, lying, backbiting, etc. Uh -huh. I, I can do that if I want to. Uh -huh. You ever heard somebody say I'm a casual drinker? Uh -huh. What well, you casually drink every day? <laughs> they ain't casual. Casual may be once in a while. Hallelujah. But if you're a casual, I had a friend, he used to say, I'm a casual drinker. I said, no, I'm a, I was an alcoholic. He said, no, Charlie, you was not an alcoholic. You was a casual drinker, too. I said, no, I did not casually drink. I drank to get drunk. And I couldn't help myself. Hallelujah. Even when I had a hangover, next day I drank another beer just to sober me up. That's about the dumbest thing I ever heard. But yet still, hallelujah, he was trying to downplay what God had brought me out of. Yeah. Come on. He trying to lessen it to a casual. When I'm saying, no, it was alcoholism, I could not stop. And I had power, but I couldn't stop. Come on. So that means I didn't have the power, really. I didn't get the power until I got God's word. Come on. Hallelujah. When you get God's word in your heart, it will change you. The thing you could not do, you can learn how to do it now with God's word. So quit letting people tell you that lie. Hallelujah. Get, ask God to give you power to overcome. Hello. He can do it. Anybody know he can do it? Yeah. Anybody, anybody can you use to smoke? No, you still smoke. Then, um, Hallelujah. But you used to smoke. How many times have you thrown cigarettes out the window? How many times have you said you don't quit? How many times you don't fall up the pain and say I'm done with it? How many times you lied to yourself? How many times 
times you went back and brought another pack? Amen. How many times you went and poured a, a, a cigarette or something? Let me get one. After you done say you done quit. So you really didn't have the power. It was not until God's word came upon your heart and you allowed that word to abide in you that it began to change you. God's word is coming to bring you life. It comes to bring you change. So therefore, we have to realize the importance of God's word. Once you begin to respect that word, then you can respect and enjoy the fruit of it. I can enjoy the fruit of it when I walk in it. Uh -huh. When I live it. Yeah. Hallelujah. People might talk about you, but they, they talk about you anyhow. They lied on you anyhow. Hallelujah. You might as well do what God called you to do. That's right. Hallelujah. I'm not saying that you ain't going to struggle in this life. Hallelujah. But I'd rather struggle with God's word than without God's word. Okay. I'd rather have God's word in my life and try to get through it. Hallelujah. Without God's word, you'll give up. If you feel like there's no hope in it. Come on. Hallelujah. Use an example of this smoke and praise God. I'm just going to give you my testimony. How God delivered me and set me free. I smoke since the time I was like 13 years old. Hallelujah. But I got saved at the age of 29. And uh, what was it? 216 weeks. Nine days. Hallelujah. I, I was just short of a year. And, and in the process of going through all this, hallelujah, I tried to quit many times. But when I got saved, God gave me power. And I knew there was something different because the word of God is saying that we should be a temple, hallelujah, for the Holy Ghost to dwell in. Yeah. Right. And when I heard that word, I said, well, I can't let the stuff that's not holy come into my holiness. Yeah. And I said, Lord, look here. You know I got this addiction, but God, you got power to yeah. break it. Yeah. Hallelujah. I know you took all our affliction on the cross. No matter what the sins were, every addiction, hallelujah. That's why when they gave me that pinnacle and gold, hallelujah, that represent all the addictions of the world. Hallelujah. And you overcame it. I said, God, you can do the same for me. I said, God, I don't want to make a mockery of your word. I already told all these people at a job that I'm saved now. So I need to walk like I'm saved. I need to talk like I'm saved. I need to act like I'm saved. And I just need to be saved. I said, Lord, but I need deliverance. And so I said, Lord, give me power. I went in the back room and prayed. Hallelujah. And my help came. And he conquered me right there. But I still had the addiction. So when I went home, hallelujah, watch this. I went home looking for them cigarettes. I had two Newports left in that pack. Y'all know nothing about them. Come on. Hallelujah. But I had two of them left in the pack. And I went looking for them. But thank God. Hallelujah. He already sent an angel to clean out my house. It was in the form of my wife. She done grabbed them too far and threw it in the trash. And me, oh, hallelujah. You know, when you're trying to hide in sin. And you don't want nobody to know what you're doing. You try to be casual about it. You're looking for your cigarette. But you don't want nobody to know you're looking for. Oh, y'all don't want to talk up in here. Hallelujah. So I'm walking through the house. You know, I went to all those spots. Went to the bedroom. I done went to the bathroom. I went to the kitchen until I got bold enough and said, All right. You see, you know, no more. That was on the table. And she said, All right. I threw those in the trash. And the Lord, in my spirit, he said, Are you serious? I said, Who's talking to me? <laughs> he said, praise me. I felt the strength, the strength of him. He said, praise me, and I will deliver you. I said, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Because it was your word that will set me free. And I believe it to be your word. And I begin to shout all through the house. I begin to speak in God. Hallelujah. I begin to praise God. Hallelujah. And when I was finished, there was no more taste. Hallelujah. Yeah, as a matter of fact, you begin to stink in my nostrils. That's when you know you're delivered from something. When it begins to stink in your nostrils. When you walk in there, praise God. Oh, hallelujah. Those who've been delivered from stuff can discern it real quick. And I gave God praise. Hallelujah. And he delivered me that day. 
Hallelujah. I'm telling you, if you want to believe God at his word, if you respect the seed, which is his word, that word will bring a harvest in your life. I believe my lungs back to the right capacity now. I believe my lungs are not black anymore. Because God has cleaned it up. That's right. His word will bring you life. No matter what situation you're going through, just pray and believe. He watches over his word to perform. Just pray and believe that he's doing it. That is already done. Tell someone it's already done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The only thing I do is respect his word. Respect that seed and watch that seed produce. What happened is we take the word of God and we leave it in our hands. And there's a right garden. There's a right soul sitting there. And the only thing we have to do is drop it in the soul. And the seed will take care of itself. But what we want to do is we'll hold on. Yeah, I've been to church. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. I heard the pastor preach. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But you did not put that word in your heart. Come on. And now you're looking for the evidence of it. You're looking for the manifestation of it, but you can't receive it until you put it in your heart. It's got to go into the soul. It has to go into the soul in order for it to produce. It's going to go into the soul and it's going to die inside of you, but it's going to resurrect with life. So therefore, we have to learn to respect the seed. Because when Jesus comes here today, praise God, hallelujah, and we're doing our note burning service, doing our church anniversary and all that, and we're talking about year double, we're talking about all these blessings and all that, what difference would it make if you can't respect the seed? Come on. No need for you to talk about double if I can't even receive a single. Come on. Hallelujah. I hear people jump up and shout, praise God, hallelujah, God, I'm going to do all this here, and then they're not even uh, obedient to the word. Come on. The same word that's going to bring you freedom. You're not being obedient to it, but you're rejoicing over it. You're jumping and shouting over it. Hallelujah. But you're just being ceremonial. You're just being religious with it. Let it come in your heart. You'll be like, uh, what was his name? Uh, um, Barnabas. What is Barnabas? The one that, uh, uh, praise God, a tax collector. Hallelujah. Who said, you know what, Master? Since I've been saved, anybody who are wrong, I give him back sevenfold. Hallelujah. He said, I'm a tax collector, and I know I took money from people. But once he comes, he said, Oh, I know you say. <laughs> That's how you know it's saved. When they're operating their word, you ain't got to follow nobody around. Hallelujah. Nobody got to check your tie in the low. Come on. Hallelujah. Nobody got to put a camera on you all day long. If God's word is in your heart, it's going to produce. Tanisha, they don't say God's working on you. But you're setting up in church on Sunday. Hallelujah. You used to be sitting on Facebook on a Sunday. Hallelujah. Talking about folks on a Sunday. Cussing folks clap out on a Sunday. Hallelujah. But now you're in church praising God on a Sunday. Something different. Hallelujah. God's word is getting on the inside and it's producing the heart. Don't cut it off. Could, could you just scroll down some more? Praise God. Hallelujah. You're, you're down about four or five verses later. Praise God. Watch this here. Well, I can paraphrase it. Hallelujah. The Bible says it's like a dog returning to his own vomit. It's like a pig. They call it a sow. Hallelujah. That after it's been washed, wallow right back in the same mud again. Hallelujah. Don't let us receive God's word. Hallelujah. Or walk in it for a little while and then go back and wallow in your own mess. Come on. Come on. He said this. Oh, she's still crying. Praise God. Hallelujah. I thought he was trying to help us out. But it's okay. But just to paraphrase it all, hallelujah. We can't return to the old thing. David, once you confess that, you say, you know, I want to do what's right by God. You got to continue to walk in that way. Why? Your past is going to keep challenging you to come back. Can I get an amen there? Amen. Anybody, anybody in here past keep trying to come back to you? Hallelujah. Trying to call you up the next day? Hey there, buddy. We've been friends for a long time. Hallelujah. But you know what? This friendship is over. It was an unholy friendship. And so you can't return to the old because your old one are always trying to keep you in bondage. But 
your word to come to give you free. Freedom. The Bible says in his presence is liberty. Y'all know what liberty is? That's freedom. The word gives you freedom. Yeah, no, he said, but it happened unto them according to the true proverb, the dog is turned to his own vomit. Isn't that nasty? Well, to the dog, it must be all right. Somebody gonna catch that. Hallelujah. Somebody heard them cry. Hallelujah. When you sin it, you won't see nothing wrong with it. Because you want the wages of unrighteousness. But he said the dog is turned to his own vomit again, and the sow that was washed, come on, who washed a pig? You don't expect that pig to wallow back in there again. You ever been around when they wash the pig and get ready for uh, tomorrow? Hallelujah. And if something happened, they had to put that pig back in that pit. What happened? That pig dirty again? Good Lord. Hallelujah. Because that pig ain't delivered. And I told you earlier, God's word come to heal you and to deliver you. It was sent to deliver you. It did not send you, um, send you back or tangle back into the yoke of bondage again. But he comes to set you free. Hallelujah. Give me something quiet. God's word means it's proper respect. You got to get the proper respect of God's word in order for you to see the fruit of it. Come on. When you truly operate in it, when it's abiding in you and you abide in it, when you get outside of it, God's word will let you know. Son, you ain't walking like you should walk. Son, you ain't talking like you should talk. Daughter, you ain't walking like you should walk. You ain't talking like you should talk. He will guide you. He will keep you on the right path. He'll keep you on the right path. He'll keep you in the right way. Y'all can't say y'all don't like sin when y'all in. Because if you didn't, you wouldn't be doing it. Amen. Well, I don't like sin. If you keep on doing it, you must have liked it. Hello. Because you don't know anything better. But I come to show you a better way. God's word. Jesus Christ died for our sin. All of us were sinners. And we're saved by grace and by faith. And if we believe him and then receive his word, we never have to return to the hole again. And God will give you freedom to grow. Because what I don't want to happen today is we come in here and shout over our devil today. And we still ain't got our sin. We're still struggling with the idea of God's word. Man, this is supposed to be a shout good time right about now. Because the week has ended and you have been delivered. You don't have to wait on nobody else. Hallelujah. I, I want to come in the church now. Praise the God. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. Lord, thank you. I thank you. Sometimes we wait for it to be orchestrated. Hallelujah. We wait for it to be rehearsed. I don't need to be rehearsed. I'm just going to praise God for what he has done. I'm going to praise him for what he's still doing. Because he's awesome. What God has brought me out of. I can only testify for what God has brought me out of. And I know it has to be God. I tried it on my own. It didn't work. But I gave God a chance. God transform my heart. And I know he can transform your heart. No matter what we're going through in life, there is a word, there is a seed. If you will respect it, it will manifest in your life and break whatever shackle, whatever chain that's on your life. It will break it. God's word is above all things. He said, I got a name above all things. Hallelujah. So therefore, in, in his name is his word. Yes. And so therefore, there's nothing hiding. The Bible says heaven and earth shall pass away before his word shall fail. Glory. And it never comes back. <laughs> never, 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 never. Not once have it ever came back for. It is sets out and it comes what it set out to do. There's the time. Hallelujah. Let me share something with you. Hallelujah. I walked over this church three times yesterday. The 
go pick up a shirt. And every time I got over here, I didn't accomplish what I said I did. I got over here and started talking about what was going on. Talking about, and I walked back to the house and walked in the door and realized, it ain't what I went for. <laughs> So I got up there and my mother in law said, You ain't brought the shirt back. I said, No, I'm going to eat it now. I went back on there and talked again. Came back to the house. And I heard a whisper from my wife. I think you got the shirt this time. So people begin to question you if you don't receive that word. You go to church every Sunday. You go to Bible study, but they don't see no change. So they begin to question if you receive that word.
those in the parking lot who use their porches. You may be listening by phone. But as this word is found to me, just fall down on your knees and worship the Lord. Or in your car, just bow your head. If you try to pull on the side of the road first, we trust God, we believe God. And just begin to worship Him right here with the Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your grace. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness. Thank you, Lord, for your mercy. You say goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And Father, I thank you right now, God, that you did not leave me in a pit, oh God, but you brought me out. Your word, oh God, drew me out of the pit, oh Lord. And I thank you for that love you showed me. Father, I thank you right now, God, for delivering your people in this place right now, God. Set their hearts free right now, God. No matter what their harassment is, no matter what their affliction is right now, God, we know you are great. We know you are great, oh Lord. Abide in us as we abide in you. Strengthen us right now, even the more right now, God. Get in the inward parts right now. Come on, just lift your hands in this place right now. Come on. We're lifted hands and lifted hearts. God, we are glory. Jesus, we call on your name. Have your way in this place right now. Have your way in this place. Jesus, have your way in this temple. Jesus, have your way in our heart. Jesus, renew our mind. Jesus, transform us. Jesus. Your name is above all names. You are Lord of Lords and King of Kings. Every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that you are Lord. And God, we thank you in this place right now for your seed right now, manifested in our spirit right now, and producing a harvest that you may get the glory out of, Lord. Deliver us from all our afflictions, oh Lord. Anything that may hinder of your glory, oh God. Deliver it right now, oh God. Father, I thank you for renewed strength right now, oh God. I thank you for your power. Have your way. Have your way, Lord. Just have your way. We trust you, Lord. We believe you, Lord. For your word shall not fail. We know your word will not fail. It accomplishes what it's set out to do. Your ways are higher than our ways. Like the stars and the sun is above the earth, your ways are higher. We lead not to our own understanding. We acknowledge you in all our ways. Father, direct our hearts, direct our paths right now. Give us eternal strength. Give us inner strength. Strengthen our conviction. Strengthen our resolve. That we may stand. And all that we do, we will stand. We stand upon the rock. We believe. And we know. That we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Have your way right now. Thank you for delivering our hearts. Our minds right now. Thank you, Lord, for taking the blinders off our eyes right now. The veil from off our face right, face right now, God. That we're no longer blinded by the things of this world, the lust of the flesh, the pride of life. Father, I thank you for the Lord right now. For the outpouring of your Holy Spirit right now. Fall fresh upon every soul within this place right now. Father, I pray right now that you touch my daughter-in-law right now. Touch her body right now, God. She just delivered, oh God. Praise God. Hallelujah. And the baby is healthy. The baby is strong, oh God. Father, I pray for a recovery on her body right now, oh God. Speedy recovery, oh God. Hallelujah. Without complications right now, oh God. Strengthen her right now, oh God. For the things she has called in you, oh God. Father, I thank you right now, oh God. Have your way right now. All those who have been afflicted right now, 
with sickness and disease, with COVID-19, oh God. Father, I bring, I pray that you will put healing on their body right now, oh God. Strengthen their immune system right now, oh God. Cast out every foreign virus right now. Every rebellious cell in their body right now, oh God. Make it conform to your will right now. Father, I thank you right now, oh God. Let the blood of Christ run through our veins. The healing power of all of Gilead. Father, I thank you even more right now. Have your way right now, oh God. Bring those out of depression right now, oh God. Those that suffer with anxiety, oh God. Bring them out right now, oh God. Don't let them be a slave, oh God, to that fear, oh God. Father, those uncertainties, oh God. You say, take no thought for tomorrow. Sufficient is the trouble of the day. Father, I thank you right now, oh God. We trust you in all that we do. Have your way. Have your way right now, even the more. Father, I ask that you would touch the musicians right now, oh God. That they will glorify you in song, glorify you in music, oh Lord. As David would play skillfully, oh God, but he also played up under the anointing, oh God. That he was able to drive out unclean spirits, oh Lord. Saturate us, oh God, with your presence in this place right now. We pray in victory and not defeat. We glorify you in this place. And in Jesus' name we pray. Let the church say amen. Come on, let the church say Nigeria, and it 
in Africa, hallelujah, they would come and they had the baskets up there. They would dance all the way to the offering. And they'll dance back to this city. It would take about an hour and a half for them to shout all the way up there. Hallelujah. But we were talking thousands of folks up there where they would dance and they would go forward. Hallelujah. They would be praising God. Hallelujah. They have whatever they had in their hand and they'll put it in there with just as much enjoyment, just as much shouting as some of the Arabian dogs would do. Jesus commented the woman who put two mites in there for mighty greater giver than anybody else before. Even though you had some uh, Pharisees and Sadducees and some rich folk and elders that put in big bags of money. And he said, she put in more. She only gave two mites. But she gave all that she had. We got to learn how to give all we have, which is God. He said, well, if I give all I got, then I won't have anything left. You still have a left. Because you don't get a beating to God. God will bless you back. How is it that the birds don't go to work? But God still take care of them. The flowers, they do not toil, they do not spin, but yet still, Solomon, all his glory could not compare to it. So I thank you.